Over the years, television shows have left us with many memorable characters. Some of the most memorable TV characters of all time are actually inspired by real, living people. Here, we show you some popular TV characters that were based on real people. Michael Richards played the famous Kramer on Seinfeld. The character was inspired by a real stand-up comedian called Kenny Kramer. Show creator Larry David wrote the character based on the comedian's mannerisms and eccentricities to create the beloved Kramer for the show. In the hit series Mad Men, actor John Hamm plays the charming and ambitious Don Draper. The character was based on a real-life giant of advertising named George Lois, although Lois himself has stated that he wasn't a fan of Don Draper's character. Olivia Pope, played by Kerry Washington on the hit show Scandal, was directly inspired by a real-life political fixer named Judy Smith. Smith made her bones helping stars like Monica Lewinsky and Michael Vick get out of different jams. Her firm, Smith & Company, inspired the whole show and the character of Olivia Pope. Terrence Howard brilliantly portrayed a hip-hop mogul named Lucius Lyon on the show Empire. The inspiration for the character was drawn from rapper and real-life mogul Jay-Z. The writers were inspired by the rapper's criminal past as well as his ambition for big business. Terrence went on to receive many award nominations for his work as Lucius. Another Seinfeld character was the infamous The Soup Nazi. The mean kitchen attendant was inspired by a real restaurant owner named Ali Yagane. Show creators Larry David and Jerry Seinfeld wrote the character based on interactions they had with Yagane in real life. Yagane reportedly hated the character because he said it hurt his business. He allegedly refused to accept a personal apology from Seinfeld for any hard feelings. Entourage was an HBO series known for showcasing the ins and outs of life in Hollywood. Adrian Grenier played the iconic lead role of Vincent Chase. The character is based mostly on actor Mark Wahlberg, and the series was inspired by Wahlberg's story of rags to riches. Just like Vincent Chase, when Wahlberg arrived in Hollywood, he also brought his entourage with him from Boston to help him adjust to his new home. All of the guys in Vincent's entourage are based on friends Wahlberg had around him in real life. Sheldon and Amy made up one of our favorite couples on the series The Big Bang Theory. But do you know what the love life of the actors is like in real life? In The Big Bang Theory, Sheldon Cooper, a.k.a. Jim Parsons, was very happy with his partner, Amy, a.k.a. Mayim Bialik. But in real life, the actor is married to his longtime partner, Todd Spiewak, since 2017. They have been together for over 10 years. Kanal Nair's character in The Big Bang Theory, Raj, has serious trouble communicating with women. In real life, however, Kanal is married to the gorgeous former Miss India, Naya Kapoor. The two have been a happy couple since 2011. Leonard, aka Johnny Galecki, and Penny, aka Kaylee Kuko, are one of the cutest couples on The Big Bang Theory. Even though they've broken up many times, they always seem to get back together. Did you know that Kaylee Cuoco and Johnny Galecki were dating in real life? Since 2018, Johnny Galecki has been in a relationship with the beautiful Elena Meyer. As if this were not enough, it was only in December 2019 that they welcomed their son named Avery. Kaylee Cuoco also had a pretty happy love life. The actress has been in a relationship with Carl Cook since 2014, and they have been husband and wife since 2018. 
Sarah Gilbert has been married to singer-songwriter Linda Perry since 2014. You probably remember Linda for being the lead singer of the group Four Non Blondes. Although they are still officially married, the Big Bang Theory star filed for divorce from her partner in 2019. In the Big Bang Theory, Melissa Roche's character Bernadette is in a relationship with Howard, played by Simon Helberg. However, in real life, the beautiful actress has been married to screenwriter Winston Beagle since 2007 and they have a daughter named Sadie. What a beautiful couple. From 2003 to 2012, Mayim Bialik, who plays Amy in The Big Bang Theory, was married to Michael Stone, with whom she has two children. The actress herself was in another relationship from 2013 to 2018 with an unknown man and has apparently been single ever since. It's been almost 15 years since the pilot of Scrubs aired on television. The show ran for nearly a decade and was a hilarious fresh take on the classic hospital television drama. Let's now take a look at what the cast of Scrubs has been up to since their days at Sacred Heart. Zach Braff played the lead role in Dr. John Dorian, or as he was affectionately known in the show, JD. After ending his time as JD on Scrubs, Zach returned to the world of theater as a playwright in 2011, with All New People, which premiered in Manhattan. Zach has also shifted his focus to directing film. In 2017, he directed the great Michael Caine in the comedy Going In Style. JD's best friend, Dr. Christopher Turk, was played by the very funny Donald Faison. At the end of the show, Donald married his second wife. Turk and JD are best friends off screen, and the wedding took place in Zach's home. In 2013, Donald was seen on the big screen playing Dr. Gravity in Kick-Ass 2. Donald has also appeared in several music videos like Ingrid Michaelson's Time Machine. Canadian actress Sarah Chalk played Dr. Elliot Reed. Her character had an on-again, off-again relationship with JD, but they ultimately ended up together. Sarah gave life to another doctor named Stella Zinman on How I Met Your Mother in 2008. She also had several small television roles on shows like Cougar Town and Mad Love. She is currently the voice of Beth Smith on Rick and Morty. Nurse Carla Espinosa was played by Judy Reyes. Carla was married to Turk and the two had one of the cutest relationships on television. After Scrubs wrapped, Judy was seen playing Zolia Diaz on the Lifetime drama Devious Maids. She also made several appearances on shows including Jane the Virgin and Fresh Off the Boat. John C. McGinley played the hard-hitting Dr. Cox. He was a fan favorite on the show because of his hilarious long rants and his complicated relationship with JD. Like Zach Braff, after Scrubs, John returned to the stage for a period of time. He played Dave Moss in a Broadway revival of Glen Gary, Glen Ross. John is also a spokesman for the National Down Syndrome Foundation, as unfortunately, his son suffers from the disease. In Sons of Anarchy, alongside the main character, Jax Teller, his stepfather and president of the Motorcycle Club also played a major role. Clay Morrow was portrayed by Ron Perlman. We take a look at what the actor has been doing since the series. Ron Perlman can now look back on decades of his Hollywood career. He made his breakthrough in the 80s as the Lion Man Vincent in Beauty and the Beast. Before Sons of Anarchy, he was also known from Hellboy, where he played the hero. Even before the end of the Biker series, Ron was seen at the side of his Sons of Anarchy colleague and Jax actor, Charlie Hunnam, as the CD underground operator Hannibal Chow in Pacific Rim. In the following years, he played Detective Chilcote in 13 Sins and the seedy goblin Narlac 
in Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them. In Asher, he embodied the eponymous contract killer. Some series roles that the American took on after Sons of Anarchy were those of Purnell Harris in Hand of God and Wes Chandler in Startup. Pullman has also worked as a voice actor for animated films, series, and video games for many years. To this day, the actor now in his early 70s is a very busy man. In the fantasy film Monster Hunter, which was released in 2020 and is based on the video game series by the same name, he plays the Admiral. New productions with Perlman include the thrillers Nightmare Alley and this game's called Murder. He is also part of the cast in the comedy Don't Look Up, which is filled with Hollywood stars. Here are some fun facts about Selma Hayek's iconic movie, Frida. The great Shavella Vargas, who sings the iconic song Ya Llorona in the film, knew Frida Kahlo. In fact, she not only knew her, but it is said that they had a really close relationship, just as Shavella was rising to fame. One of Frida Kahlo's own nieces was so pleased and amazed with Hayek's personification that she gave her one of Kahlo's necklaces as a gift. At that time, Selma was in a relationship with actor Edward Norton, who played an important role in the making of the film, although his name never appeared in the credits. Norton did an edit and a rewrite of the script. It had been thought that American actress Laura San Giacomo would play the iconic Frida. However, when this news was leaked, the public was unhappy that it wasn't a Mexican actress who would play her. In turn, the great Robert De Niro had expressed interest in playing Diego Rivera, but in the end, the role was given to English actor Alfred Molina, with complaints by the public once again. It was Selma who approached Molina to offer him the role for which he had to gain 51 pounds, 23 kilos. Madonna, who has been a great fan of Kahlo's work, and actually has several paintings of her, also showed interest in playing the iconic painter. She even approached the legendary Marlon Brando to be her Diego, both iconic, but definitely not the right fit for these roles. Selma had to sue Harvey Weinstein, producer of the movie, for breach of contract because he wanted to replace her with another actress. Just a few years ago, with the emergence of the Me Too movement, it was revealed that he had harassed Hayek and threatened to replace her if she didn't do what he wanted. Selma was so dedicated to the project that she approached Dolores Olmedo, Diego's lover and administrator of the rights to Frida and Diego's work upon his death, to ask her for access to the paintings. In addition to some originals, the film also features some of the creations Hayek herself made during filming. For her role as Frida, Selma became the first Mexican woman to be nominated for Best Actress at the Oscars, the first Mexican woman to be nominated in an acting category at the Academy Awards was Katie Jurado, who was nominated for Supporting Actress in 1954. The movie was filmed entirely in Mexico, and the production was able to have access to important locations like La Casa Azul in Coyoacan, Frida Kahlo's house. However, they didn't have exclusive access in some locations, as was the case of the archaeological site of Teotihuacan, since regular tourists can be seen in these scenes. Thanks to the 70 films he was a part of, Robin Williams became an icon with his talents. He played a variety of roles, including a psychiatrist, a nanny, and of course, a genie. Here are some films featuring beloved characters that were brought to life by this great actor. Patch Adams. Although critics were not kind to this film, with a consensus of too obvious, the doctor who cared for patients with laughter was one of Robin Williams' most endearing characters for audiences. 
Awakenings. Throughout his career, Robin Williams played all kinds of characters, from the most humorous to the most serious. Dr. Malcolm Sayer is a fictional doctor portrayed by Williams, dedicated to the care of catatonic patients. Dead Poet Society. One of his most successful films, Williams earned an Oscar nomination for Best Actor for his role. John Keating is an unusual English professor who fills his classes with poetry and philosophy. Jumanji. The actor played Alan Parrish, who was a shy and introverted boy before being stuck in a magical board game. After being free 26 years later, Alan has to return his life back to normal by way of adventure and survival. Aladdin. Many argue that voice acting was never the same after Williams portrayed the shape-shifting genie in the Disney animated hit. He won a special achievement award at the Golden Globes. What Dreams May Come In one of his most visually attractive films, Robin played Dr. Christopher Nielsen. After dying in a car accident, just like his children did years earlier, his character embarks on a search for his family in the afterlife. Good Morning Vietnam This commercially successful movie earned Williams a Golden Globe for Best Actor and his first Oscar nod. He played an irreverent and zany DJ for the U.S. Armed Forces. Hook Williams' character in this movie is your average workaholic father until he finds out he is the grown-up Peter Pan and has to save his kidnapped children from one of the most infamous villains in children's fiction. Good Will Hunting. This is the role with which Robin finally won an Oscar. His character, Dr. Sean McGuire, is the final hope for the future of a young genius who refuses to take mandatory therapy sessions seriously. Mrs. Doubtfire. Williams once again used his acting chops in spectacular fashion as he played not just a woman, but an elderly nanny. This role earned him yet another Golden Globe. These celebrities not only surprised us on screen or in athletics, but they also did it by redirecting their careers to politics. The most recent case is that of Kanye West, who thought that popularity in sales could be translated into votes. However, in the 2020 US presidential race, he qualified for ballot access in only 12 states. Arnold Schwarzenegger went from the Terminator to the Governator. He took a break from filmmaking when he was elected California's governor. He served from 2003 to 2011. Another movie star who became governor of California was Ronald Reagan. He was in office from 1967 to 1975. Reagan is arguably the most successful Hollywood actor turned politician in that he became president of the United States and served for two terms. The renowned director and actor Clint Eastwood surprised us when he was elected mayor in the town of Carmel-by-the-Sea, a small California municipality. At age 55 in 1986, Eastwood won the election in a landslide victory. His salary was donated every month to the local youth center. Child actor Shirley Temple tried running for a few offices after her retirement from acting. Despite failing to be elected to Congress in 1967, she served as U.S. Ambassador to Ghana in 1974 and to the former Czechoslovakia in 1989. You thought we were going to leave out Donald Trump, didn't you? Well, technically he was a TV star in addition to being a businessman. He surprised everyone when he won the presidency of the U.S. in 2016. His was one of the most controversially filled presidential terms in U.S. history. Sonny Bono, famous for being Cher's husband and singing partner, was mayor of Palm Springs from 1988 to 1992. He later also served as an elected member of the U.S. House of Representatives, a position he held until his death in 1998. Stacey Dash is most famous for the feature film Clueless and its television spin-off. She ran briefly in 2018 for a seat in the U.S. Congress. Fred Thompson from Law & Order not only played fictional and historical U.S. presidents as an actor, 
but served as an actual U.S. Senator for almost 10 years. He was a presidential candidate in 2008, but dropped out after dwindling support in early primaries. Manny Pacquiao stepped into the ring of politics, all while defending the welterweight boxing title. He was a member of the Philippine House of Representatives from 2010 to 2016. The actress known for playing Miranda on Sex and the City, Cynthia Nixon, is another star who tried her luck at politics. She tried to become governor of New York State in 2018, but was not successful. These days, it seems that every famous person has something to say politically. Who would you vote for? On May 19th, 2021, Demi Lovato came out as non-binary on Twitter. In the announcement made, Demi said, This has come after a lot of healing and self-reflective work. I'm still learning and coming into myself, and I don't claim to be an expert or a spokesperson. Sharing this with you now opens another level of vulnerability for me. Moving forward, Demi will be officially identifying with the pronouns they slash them. Following this revealing announcement, we've decided to take a look at Demi Lovato's career. Born on August 20th, 1992, Demetria Devon Lovato had an interest in music and performance from a very young age. At just seven, Demi learned to play the piano, and later at 10, the guitar as well, while she was also taking dancing and acting lessons. 2002 brought Lovato a spot on the children's show Barney and Friends as Angela, alongside friend Selena Gomez who played Gianna. But it wasn't until 2007 that Lovato would get a breakthrough role when auditioning for Disney Channel. They auditioned for the TV musical Camp Rock and sitcom Sunny with a Chance and got the lead role in both. Playing Mitchie Torres in Camp Rock brought Demi instant fame and the beginnings of a musical career. This Is Me from the movie was Demi's first lead single and later that same year, the debut studio album Don't Forget was released. Lovato remained at Disney Channel and worked on various projects with Selena Gomez and the Jonas Brothers until 2010, after deciding to take a hiatus from acting. The following years brought Demi another album, Unbroken, which debuted at number 4 in the US, and a job as a judge and mentor on the US version of The X Factor, where Lovato remained for only two seasons. In 2013, Lovato released a fourth album entitled Demi, whose single Heart Attack peaked at number 10 in the US, appeared on four episodes of Glee, and announced the Demi World Tour for 2014, which was Lovato's very first world tour. Releasing a fifth studio album in 2015, Confident debuted at number 2 on the Billboard 200 and Demi performed numerous songs from the album on SNL. That same year, Lovato and Nick Jonas started an artistic-centric record label, Safehouse Records, and they later toured together on the Future Now tour. Having struggled through mental illnesses, Lovato has been an advocate for mental health and executive produced the documentary Beyond Silence in 2017. In July of 2017, the single Sorry Not Sorry was released from Lovato's sixth album, Tell Me You Love Me, and later went on tour in the US, Europe, and South America, with DJ Khaled and Kalani as special guests. Lovato's first acting appearance since Glee was on the Netflix film Eurovision Song Contest, The Story of Fire Saga. In January of 2021, it was announced that they would have a lead role on the NBC comedy show Hungry. YouTube has also released a four-part documentary of Demi's life, Demi Lovato Dancing with the Devil, and a non-official soundtrack to the documentary, Dancing with the Devil, The Art of Starting Over, was released as Demi's seventh album. On the same day as coming out as non-binary, Demi also launched a podcast, 4D with Demi Lovato, which will feature guests such as Chelsea Handler and Jane Fonda. Batman is one of the most iconic roles any actor can take on. Many have donned the cape of the famous superhero, but none ever did it with the realism and emotional honesty of Christian Bale in Christopher Nolan's The Dark Knight trilogy. The British actor, who is known for pushing the limits of his body in the name of method acting, took on an impressive transformation to play Batman. 
The preparation was grueling, but the result was one of the greatest superhero trilogies of all time. Let's now take a look at some of the actor's secrets in preparing for the role. The first installment of the trilogy came in 2005 with Batman Begins. Bale was fresh from playing his role in The Machinist, which saw him drop to a skeletal 121 pounds. This meant that he had to gain about 100 pounds of muscle mass in order to play the caped crusader. As a part of his extreme process, Bale visited the gym at least five times a week for three hours a day. His emphasis was on building lean muscle instead of bulky muscle. This implied a minimum of 30 minutes of intense cardio every single day, on top of interval weight training and flexibility exercises. Bale would target one area of his body every day and focus on a different area every day as well. This made for quite a complete workout. Day one was about the back. Doing sets of 10, Bale would perform pull-ups, lateral pull-downs, bent over rows, and many, many deadlifts. Day two was about the arms. Bicep curls, chin-ups, and tricep extensions were on the menu, among other routines. Day three focused on Bale's shoulders. This consisted of lateral raises, shoulder shrugs, and even more pull-ups. Day four was leg day. This was said to be Bale's strongest workout, and he would perform many exercises like lunges, calf raises, and weighted step-ups. That's how he developed Batman's spin kick. Finally, Day 5 focused on his chest, one of the most prominent features of the bat suit. Bale would perform sets of 10 for each exercise, which included the chest press, push-ups, and then more push-ups. We're exhausted just thinking about it. His diet was slightly simpler and consisted of loading the body with carbs and protein, which would sustain him during his grueling workouts, but also helped him build the necessary muscle mass. Leslie Odom Jr. has been active in the entertainment industry for over the past 20 years and is best known for playing Aaron Burr on the hit Broadway show, Hamilton. But the actor has already touched most of the corners of the industry, not only appearing on Broadway, but also in TV shows, films, releasing his own albums, and even a book. This is Leslie Odom Jr. from Broadway to the big screen. Born in Queens on August 6, 1981, Odom Jr. started his musical training relatively young, having attended the Philadelphia High School for Creative and Performing Arts. Leslie would also sing solos in the church choir of the Canaan Baptist Church and made his Broadway debut at the age of 17 playing Paul in Rent. He studied musical theater at Freedom Theater and continued this when he went to college later appearing in a one-night Broadway concert version of Dreamgirls. In 2003, Odom Jr. took a leap of faith and moved out to Los Angeles, getting work on TV shows like CSI Miami, Threshold, and Gilmore Girls. While getting this small screen work, Leslie was still getting roles on the stage, in productions like Jersey Boys, Being Alive, and Once on This Island. Odom Jr. was the assistant director on Once on This Island, and when actress Nicolette Chloe Robinson unexpectedly replaced a cast member, he was the one who had to bring her up to speed. Since that moment, the two began dating, and on December 1st, 2012, the couple happily walked down the aisle together. In 2010, while performing the role of Isaiah Sturdivant in Leap of Faith in Los Angeles, the production moved to Broadway, and so Odom Jr. relocated to New York City. In 2012, however, Odom Jr. had his very first role on the big screen, albeit a supporting role on the war movie Red Tails. He also had a reoccurring role on the musical TV series Smash as Sam Strickland in 2012 and later became a main role in 2013 for the final season. 
Leslie then released his very first album as a jazz recording artist a year later. Leslie Odom Jr., which was later updated in 2016, and charted at number one on the Billboard Jazz. In 2015, Lin-Manuel Miranda's Hamilton was still off-Broadway and later that year would transfer over to Broadway and became the hit wrapped through musical known throughout the world. The cast album won a Grammy Award in 2016, and Leslie Odom Jr. himself went on to win the Tony Award for Best Actor in a Musical that same year. A year later, Odom Jr.'s life changed for the better when his daughter, Lucille Ruby, was born, and once again in 2021 when his son, Abel Phineas, was born. 2017 also brought him the role of Dr. Arbuthnot in the Agatha Christie adaptation of Murder on the Orient Express. Adding author to his list of credentials, Odom Jr. released a book in 2018 entitled Failing Up, How to Take Risks, Aim Higher, and Never Stop Learning. According to his website, the book is about unlocking your true potential and making your dreams come true even when it seems impossible. Leslie Odom Jr. continues to delight fans all over the world with the work he's done so far, and can currently be seen playing Sam Cooke on Prime's One Night in Miami. <laughs>